So talk me through the Lakes single malt whiskey portfolio. So at Lakes Distillery, our house style is sherry-led, wood-forward and flavor-packed. We have two ranges. Uh, one is the Whiskey Makers Reserve range and the Whiskey Makers Edition range. Uh, our house style is sherry-led, so all the product creations that are led by sherry-style whiskies are into mm. the Whiskey Makers Reserve. However, we also fill a lot of other interesting casts, whether it's port or orange wine, uh, Moscatel, and those fall into our Whiskey Makers Edition portfolio. Whiskey Makers Edition is a limited edition series where we create all this different expression. We don't necessarily fall into our house style, but are also have the same DNA uh, as part of the Lakes Whiskey portfolio. What is the Lakes whiskey making philosophy? So for me, uh, whiskey making is all about creative expression. So I use whiskey as a language to communicate ideas, thoughts and emotions. Uh, it might sound a lot, but anytime you create any product, the main goal of the maker is the transformation of human experience. And the way you do it is by putting different emotions. A whiskey, when you drink it, needs to stir emotion in you. If that happens, my job is done as a whiskey maker. Now, for Lakes, uh, we have a sherry lead house style. But for me, it's very, very important that whiskey making process is looked from a holistic perspective uh, for me at lakes uh, you know you know it's not one pro one part of the process is not the most important part of the process but each and every part in the whiskey making process is as important as the other uh, whiskey is an additive process so flavor is created and modified at various stages of the whiskey making process but for me uh, the main uh, areas of flavor creation are fermentation, distillation, and maturation. But blending is the place where I put all those flavors together and I bring all those flavors, enhance them, deepen them, and contrast them. Whiskey, in a, in a sense of uh, analogy, you can take uh, the analogy from painting. You know, for me, new make spirit is more like a canvas. Uh, the more consistent the canvas, the more clear the canvas, that's where I use different casks and diff different flavors and combinations coming from different casks as my colors and I can paint the picture through the language of whiskey. Wow, that's a really great metaphor. Yeah. How long does it take for you to create a single malt expression? Uh, there is no set time uh, for me to create a recipe for an expression. Sometimes I can finish making a whiskey within a couple of hours and sometimes it might take a few weeks uh, even a few months because for me what I'm trying to do is use different flavors and characters coming out from different whiskies and I'm trying to express some kind of emotion through the language of whiskey so that's why when you see whiskey makers reserve series the, they all have the same DNA that flows through all the numbers but they have their own individual nuances if you look at whiskey maker reserve one that was much more intense bold and lot of sherry character number two was much more relaxed uh, more approachable more gentle and much more vanilla influence and number three is a bit more seductive there is a lot of incense character a uh, lot of aromatics coming from French oak and Spanish oak and with underlying layer of dry fruit character so where do you store your casks so all of us casks uh, are stored in the Lake District National Park uh, or within the vicinity of our distillery within five to ten miles. So we have thousands of cars sitting around at four different warehouses right now. So how often do you sample the casks? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, my maturation team is heavily resourced and the reason for that is I sample each and every cask and I know each and every cask within our Lakes Whiskey portfolio very intimately. Uh, we sample uh, cask at three months, we sample cask uh, uh, 12 months before we are applying to, 12 or 14 months before we are trying to bottle or create it because we have a 12 month marrying period. So what I do is I start my process probably 16 to 18 months before the bottling date and that's when I start creating recipes. So a sampling happens at least three to four times per cask during its lifetime. So there's quite a few samples here. Um, how many samples can you go through in a day? Well, uh, these are all samples uh, because I'm working on a new uh, single malt expression uh, for lakes. But uh, right now we, on my bench, we have around 125 samples. Uh, but I go through around three to 400 samples 
uh, during my normal blending session. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I look at each and every cask and I know each and every cask in my portfolio very, very intimately. I know what stage are there, what stage of maturation there are, when it's the right time to pick up or if I'm trying to leave them for a longer time for maturation or if I'm trying to use them up. So I go through the samples uh, every time and I might go through a couple of hundred samples, uh, up to three, four hundred samples sometimes to create the expression uh, for Lakes Whiskey Makers Reserve or Whiskey Makers Edition. So we've got quite the color spectrum here. Um, can you talk us through where the color comes from? Yeah, as you can see, uh, the most interesting thing here, uh, this line, uh, people might not realize it, but this is an Oloroso uh, sherry cask. It's a sherry butt uh, made up of American oak. So it's much more lighter in color, but if you see this one, that's an Oloroso sherry cask as well, uh, but made up of Spanish oak and it's a hogshead so the color is much more deeper while this one is much more lighter but they both are oloroso sherry cask so the smaller the cask and depending on what the oak is if it's american oak it will generally have a much more lighter color mm. but if it's spanish oak or french oak it will get much more deeper color to it now uh, the focus of my career is sherry casks and uh, and Lakes has a sherry style uh, philosophy. So we go very, very deep into sherry. So for example, a lot of uh, 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 customers ask us how many uh, types of sherry casks we have. We have the three major types. Uh, the Lakes is made up of uh, Oloroso sherry, PX sherry and Fino sherry, but Oloroso forms the basic backbone of the structure. Mm -hmm. But however, I have around 16 types of Oloroso casks. Uh, I have around eight types of different PX cask and that can range from different seasoning times to different oaks to different toasting levels. So everything is more like a shade of color. If you look, uh, you know, when we were kids, uh, we, I had a big uh, crayon box with different shades of green, different shades of orange. It's not just one green color. So what you see here is different cask create you the different shades. It's, you get a very broad spectrum of flavors and colors that come from different casks that allows you to paint the picture. That's amazing. I didn't know that the wood could have such an impact on the color of the whiskey. Yeah, uh, a slightly pink color right here is port cask. Uh, port cask give you a very nice uh, pink uh, hue to it, but they're also made up of American oak. So what are you thinking when you're going through all those cask samples? I think, uh, First of all, what I'm trying to uh, figure out first is, is this cask ready for me to use it in the expression I'm trying to make? Or does it have the character or the nuance that I'm trying to bring into the whiskey formulation? Uh, I just get a few, a fraction of a second uh, sometimes, and, or maybe a couple of seconds to make a decision whether I want to use that particular cask in the recipe that I'm trying to create. Uh, should I leave the cask for another three to five years? Should I move the cask into a different cask to create another layer of flair? So I just have a few seconds to make those decisions because if you stay too long with a cask, your mind starts playing games and you start getting more and more deeper into what you shouldn't be doing. So I think the first uh, lesson that I learned about cask is never to sit on fence and always trust your gut feel and move on to the next one. How do you decide on the strength of each single malt bottling? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, for us, once I lock down the recipe of the single malt uh, or the expression that I'm to, trying to create, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, set up the samples at all different varying strengths all the way from cast strength to 47 percent and then i'll try to figure out the the strength that best matches the character that i'm trying to create or express and i'll bottle at that strength so if you look at uh, the first two releases from uh, lakes the whiskey makers reserve number one and number two they both were cast friend whiskeys because i thought cast friend best represented the character i was after for Whiskey Maker 3, uh, I thought mid 50s was the best strength uh, that expresses the character uh, and aromatic nature of the whiskey that I'm trying to create. So I decided to bottle around mid 50s. So, but at, with every bottling, I go through different strengths and then I'll decide the one that I feel best represents the character and the flavor and the style that I'm trying to create. So we chatted to you a couple of years ago and you mentioned that you were doing some exciting experimentation with orange wine casks. Mm -hmm. What happened with that? 
I spend a lot of time in Spain with my mentor, yeah. uh, just learning about more uh, sherry cask. And that's when I discovered the orange wine cask. So orange wine is a cask uh, that I have used in our first single malt, the Genesis. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we fill a lot of orange wine casks in different, different combinations for our lake single malt and our blended whiskey portfolio. So if you see here, uh, that's the lake single malt matured in orange wine casks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it gives you an amazing zesty orange character, orange peel character, and more of a marmalade finish mm. on the palate. So it is really, really delicious. <laughs>